Welcome, homeschooling. Volume 21. This is Marshall when he was very little. That's an old cup. Hope you guys are doing okay. Uh, I think I'm holding together all right. At times. Um, let's see. Viewer comment Ben is rocking. Thanks for all the kind words about uh, all the videos, guys. You know, I'm, I'm glad that there's not a lot of knuckleheads out there in viewer comment land. Everybody's generally pretty nice. Let's see what we got here. Uh, let's see. I got a bunch of them. I, I, I handwrite them all. Look, they're all handwritten. Isn't that cool? Here's a couple. Let's see. Um, one guy said, hey, Tom, do you usually wipe down your guitars after playing or are you just changing strings every two days they always look so fresh wow that's crazy yeah i, I hardly ever change strings you know um I, th I feel like uh i was lucky to have like very low acidity in my hands you know some guys can kill a set of strings just by looking at them I i'm one of those guys i can play a guitar forever and they don't rust and they don't get weird what does happen and when I do change strings is when the frets cause divots in the back of the strings. Over time, you know, they just put dents in the back of the strings. And that's when you can't get in tune anymore. Intonation goes out the window. And that's when I change strings. Because I like the sound of dead strings, you know, on certain guitars especially. Uh, but, yeah, um, I've got a couple friends, you know, who can just, who just man, I, every time they go, hey, man, can I use one of your guitars? And... I hand it to him and they hand it back to me and it's just like, whoa, man. It's like a, it sounds like, like it's like coated with something. I don't know what that is. But anyway, uh, some guys have that trouble, I suppose. Uh, let's see. Uh, a lot of guys have been saying stuff about they're really getting something out of the advice that I gave about closing your eyes when you play. I'm, I'm glad to hear that because I think that's a very uh, important thing. Uh, man, I can't, I can't say enough about that. And uh, some guys even said they practice like in a dark room and stuff. That's a good idea, man. Just really get good at using your ears, you know? Let's see. Uh, one guy said, non-guitar non question. If you can't find rolling rocks out and about, what's your plan B? Man, I've been struggling with that lately because Publix doesn't carry rolling rock, sadly. So, uh. I suppose my next choice would be like a yingling, which is, I don't like those nearly as much as Rolling Rocks, but I'll, sometimes I'll stop at the gas station on the way home from the Publix and get the Rolling Rocks that they have there in the beer cave. I love that beer cave. I'd like to live in that beer cave. Some guys have been sending in some um, t-shirt ideas, you know, some don't get mad if I don't respond. Uh, I'm just looking at them all. Some cool stuff's coming in so far. Uh, thanks for that, you guys. One guy said, hey, Tom, did you play on Vince Gill's Oki album? The acoustics on there are absolutely beautiful. Can you talk more about your acoustic approach and setup in the studio? Well, yeah, I, I did play on some of that. Um, Vince does most of the acoustic himself on those records, and he's an amazing acoustic player, of course. He's amazing at everything, golf. He's got great hand-eye coordination. That guy's good at everything. Um, and I, I do play a bit of acoustic here and there. I think I played some on that album, but I mostly, you know, do electrics, you know. My acoustic playing is okay at times. I feel like um, it's not my specialty, you know. It, it, I, I always consider it to be, like, along the lines of when it comes to keyboard players. Like, some guys are piano players and some guys are organ players. And those two worlds are very different. Just because you're great at piano doesn't mean you can play an organ, and vice versa. Same thing with acoustic and electric. I mean, I can get by on acoustic. I can actually fool people into thinking I'm okay at it sometimes, but it's not really my main jam. I'm an electric guy. I like uh, the tonal shading and all the different stuff you can do with electric guitars. Um, but every once in a while, I like picking up an acoustic and plunking on it. I really only have one good acoustic. It's that old Martin, and uh, I've been through plenty old Gibsons and all that, and, uh, but I've had really good luck with that orchestra size Martin. I've bought so many guitars over the years trying to find like the magical 
uh, recording acoustic, and I've been buying all these big dreadnoughts, D28s, you know, J45s, you know, Southern Jumbos, J200s, and uh, that triple O eighteen I just got, that 38 is, is the, I've had the best results so far. Every engineer I, I play that for seems to really love that guitar. It just sounds great on tape. I don't know if I just got lucky or if that's, that's the thing with those orchestra sized guitars, who knows? I'm sure you guys know more than I do. Let's see. Um, what else here? What are your thoughts on Les Pauls? I've had a lot of people ask me about Les Pauls. I love Les Pauls, man. I don't really, I don't even own a humbucker Les Paul right now at this, at this particular juncture of my life. But man, I've owned plenty of them. I've never had a real flame top because uh, I'm not rich, but I've had plenty of you know uh, Les Paul customs, you know, fifties, sixty eights, sixty nines. Tons of those. I like those guitars just fine. My 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 problem with Les Paul Customs just this is just this is just me. Uh, I love them, and I, I'm talking about the humbucker ones. But I found that with the ebony boards and, and the maple tops, that when you get up in this rain, when you're playing solos, like right around here somewhere, they're so bright and glassy that they just pierce like a laser in, a, in, a, in not a good way. Um, man, it's just a little too bright for me, uh, but I love them. You know, I'm, I'm a big, I mean, if somebody said, here's a nice 68 Les Paul Custom, I would take it. I'm just saying, you know, I'm picky. So I do like those, but uh, I like uh, uh, Humbucker Les Pauls, all right, but I prefer an SG, just me personally. I'm not saying they're better guitars, so don't send any hate mail, but I just prefer the sound of an SG. I just think they're cooler sounding. Not as much flubby low end, and they're and they're more rock and roll sounding to, to me. God, I feel bad even saying that because I know everybody's gonna light up the comment bin. But that's just you know everybody's got personal taste, you know. But I think a three thirty five is better than both of them. Sorry. Okay, one guy said you look traumatized by Vegas when I mentioned Las Vegas in that last episode. Oh Lord, you have no idea, my friend. I used to go out to Vegas and play for weeks at a time, like on house gigs. I would be like when I was playing with uh, Winona Judd back in the '90s. We would stay at Caesar's Palace for like a week at a time, play there two shows a day. Oh Lord Jesus, I lost so much money. I do. I, I've had a bit of a gambling problem in my life. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I do like to bet the football. I still do that, but you know. Anything to get the blood pumping, I say. That's what I say. I don't know. I'm sure some of you guys are out there with me. Uh, I love football, man. I'll sit there all Sunday and watch games all day. My wife is like, is that all you're going to do all day? I'm like, yeah, I got 500 on this game. So there's that. And then, uh, let's see, I got stuff on this side, too. Okay, this is a good one. As a guitarist with carpal tunnel syndrome, when I play, it really aches. But these videos have inspired me to push through. I've had lots of people write in about the hand pain thing. And yeah, man, you know, that's a serious deal with guitar. Here's what I do. I'm, you know, I've been lucky. I'm 51. And so far, I haven't had any crippling muscle injuries or carpal tunnel. Uh, I'm thankful for that. Uh, every once in a while, I get a little shooting pain right here if I'm trying to do something. And man, anytime I start feeling that, I immediately stop whatever I'm doing. Don't do that anymore. Because once that creeps in, that, that pain right there, it, it takes a while to go away and it drives me nuts. There's certain guitar necks that I've found, certain profiles of necks that really activate that problem. Like my dream guitar, that a guitar that I've always wanted was a 1960 or 59 Tele Custom, you know, Sunburst with binding. I've always, always wanted one of those, and they're so elusive, they're so hard to find, and I recently found one, I was like, after 10 years of searching for one of these, I finally found one, but I bought the guitar, and I took it home and tried to play it for a couple of days, man, and just that, something about that neck shape was just causing all this pain, if I play it for 30 minutes, it was like shooting pain, I'm like, fuck that, I am not keeping that guitar, I brought it back, and uh, they were kind enough to refund my money, and um you know, it's, 
I'm sure that guitar would be fine for someone else, but for me personally, uh, there was just something about that neck shape that, that aggravated my carpal tunnel, you know? And I know some guys have other problems in other parts of their wrists and their hands and stuff. Um, I haven't had that, so I don't really know, but I'm heartbroken for those that have because it's it's a drag. And um, some guys have it in their picking hand, you know, that play a lot of finger style. I know guys that have had carpal tunnel there. and I have no advice about surgeries or any of that stuff because I've never had to go through it. But I just know that when I start feeling any pain in here, I just immediately stop whatever I'm doing. And maybe that'll help somebody out there. I don't know. Let's see. Tom, a couple more. Tom, I admire how your face doesn't twitch too much when you're playing those tricky licks. I sometimes look like I'm receiving electrical shocks when the fingers get going. Well, I've had plenty of comments about my guitar faces throughout the course of these 40 volumes or whatever I've done so far. Um, man, it's, I have no control over it. All these faces are totally involuntary. I, I have no idea. Or some people, one guy said, are the guitar faces important to playing guitar? And I was like, I don't know. I, I have noticed that a lot of badass guitar players make crazy faces. Maybe there's something to it. I don't know. But if it bothers you, I'm sorry. I have no control over it. It's totally involuntary. I've always done it. Um, let's see. Joe Walsh has some great guitar faces. There's lots of guys that do. I think it's cool, personally. I really like it. All right. Uh, let's see. Here's, a, here's an interesting one. The guy said, Tom, what's your best advice for developing solos live? When, when to go for the jugular, or how to go for the jugular when required? I find that live either... Adrenaline or nerves get the best of me, and I find myself performing at partial capacity. Breathing helps, but how do you find the, your cool in the heat of battle? That's a, that's a good one. Refer back to that old video I did about that old Southern joke. Remember that one? That joke is more than just a joke. You have to get in the mindset of that joke when you're playing the guitar. I'm telling you, man. See, there's many, I've, I've learned over the years in studio, be, being under the microscope, being scrutinized to the last shred of your humanity, that there are many different compartments and little boxes in my brain that I can be playing from. There's these little rooms in there. Some rooms are really good for playing guitar and some rooms are not. And I, I find myself uncontrollably sort of drifting from one room to another in my brain the room I want to be in is the free room where everything is loose, flowing, and free. Sometimes somebody's comments or something that somebody says to me will get me out of that free room into some other horrible room that I don't want to be in. And it's not a free place. And it's like, and what happens is I find myself clenching the guitar too hard. My fingers are pushing down too hard. I'm squeezing the hell out of the neck. That is not where you want to be. That is not where you want to be. When I was a kid, I used to try to, when I played gigs, it was all a blur. I'd walk off the stage and it was like a car accident. I was like, what happened? Did we do okay? But now as a grown man, as an adult, I remember every single note of those, of those gigs. Like I am living in that moment and I am totally calm. And inside I'm thinking about that old Southern joke. Think about it, kids. I'm telling you, there's something to that, man. You don't wanna be playing from a place of, uh, of uh, panic. And, and you know, all the greats, any, anytime you ever see anybody doing anything great, think about this. I don't care if it's guitar, sports, golf swing, or a guy putting in your hardwood floors. You know, I made a joke about that on that show the other night. Uh, anytime you see anybody doing anything great, it barely looks like they're doing anything. You ever notice that? It's just, it's economy and motion and, and it's, it's graceful and it doesn't look like they're doing anything and you're like, Watch Steph Curry shoot a 800 mile three pointer, and you're like, he looks like a rag doll when he's shooting. He's so loose, and it's like, that's because he's great, and he, and he figured out how to use his body just right. And that's what you got to do with guitar. You got to figure out how to use everything, and and don't get tight and squeeze, and get loose, and play with flowing freedom. It's a life life's journey, boys. It's a life's journey. Uh, I still find myself, you know, squeezing the guitar too hard at times. And when I, especially like on the, if I can't get a solo in one take, 
then it's like by the fourth or fifth take, I'm squeezing the shit out of the thing because I'm not in the right place in my mind. I got to get back in that other room. And I've been experimenting with different techniques to try to get back into that free room in my brain. I'll let you know what I find out on that. Uh, that's it. So here's the, uh, here's that loop thing I was doing. It was just a four chord loop, right? There you go. Kind of a cool little thing with the static uh, tonic notes just ringing through the whole thing. The fourth and the fifth, so it's in the key of B. With a little tremolo. Maybe go to the middle pickup. You got the open E string, F sharp, and B, and the bass notes. It's like Eve sus, C, like a D over C, A sus, and then back to the thing. Sorry. Trippy music like that can't get too bluesy. I was kind of like really working heavily on the fourths and the fifths, sort of staying in that range, you know. Kind of a vibe, open, open string. And also doing a bit of that, you know, harmonic stuff, like a sliding harmonics where you where you pluck the note 12 frets above. Kind of a cool thing, you know. All right, one more thing and then I'm gonna leave you guys alone for today. Check this out, this is pretty cool. If you ever wanna sound exactly like a Wurlitzer electric piano, on a guitar, there's a cool trick. All you do is take your pick, the round shoulder, and play any chord, and just play, pick it exactly 12 frets above where you're where you're playing with a little bit of tremolo. Listen. Sounds like a whirly. I always fool people with that one. Okay, guys, have fun. See ya.